The question is, how do you know your own rotation without having somebody put you on a table and move your legs all around? We use two moves that clients can use on their own to determine kind of how their range of motion is progressing. First one we're gonna do is a toe touch. So as Haley reaches for her toes here, she's gonna keep those legs locked and just try and get as close to the floor as she feels she can go. Now, in this case, I'm looking at a few things. I'm looking at how far the hips are able to move back in space, which requires more internal rotation. I'm also seeing if the only way she gets there is by shoving her knees back. One thing we can see is, is somebody getting the range of motion just by reaching through their mid back, upper back, and arms, or are they actually having it move through the hips? So as she stands back up, typically, if you lack hip internal rotation, what's gonna happen is you're not gonna move your butt back at all and still reach for your toes like this. And then the only way you can get down there is from purely flexing your hips or rounding for your entire back. And so if somebody really has trouble in a toe touch, I can start to look for lack of internal rotation. Now let's say they can get all the way down, but they stop short of the floor. Usually, they're lacking some hip external rotation to get that final stake. So just from this move, I can already start kind of checking off what I'm missing. The second drill that we can use to really help someone figure out the rotation is a toe touch to squat drill. So a couple keys with this. When you set up, I want your feet right under your hips. You cannot turn your toes out, you cannot push your knees out, and you cannot let your heels come up off the ground. If you do one of those things, it just shows me that you're trying to drive movement from somewhere besides the hips, knees, and ankles. So as Haley starts this, she's gonna reach for her toes. And then once she can't move anymore, she's just gonna start to drop her bunt straight down towards the floor without letting her knees come out. Now, pause. If she was only able to get to hips above the knees, it starts to tell me that generally, somebody is lacking hip external rotation. If she goes a little bit deeper and gets frozen at 90 degrees, or I see those ankles start to collapse inward, I know they're missing hip internal rotation. If she keeps dropping deeper, usually at the bottom, she starts to fall backwards, turn her toes out or shove her knees out. She's starting to see that she lacks in rain hip external rotation. Come on up. So by knowing those things, then we can go apply each movement to what they're missing. This is the common setup you're gonna see with anyone envisions squatting. The wonderful world of back squatting. As Haley does it here, and knowing that I put her on a table and she had more hip internal rotation, you can see she looks great. But if you look a little harder, you see a few things happen. She leads by pushing her butt back. That's how she starts the For any way to make the squat happen, it's to turn it into a little bit of a which is a great if she wants to move a lot of weight in a back squat position, but she's never gonna get that much quad. So for somebody like herself that lacks hip and external rotation, we're gonna go to these variations. Two. The first concept I have to teach somebody that doesn't have hip and external rotation is learning how to trust their body weight back, their center of mass back. So as Haley here is doing the same squat, so she's gonna actually start and feel herself trusting the ramp and coming back where now you can actually see head over butt. And then we're gonna use the cue, drop straight down the elevator, allowing a little trust from the knees to get on down. Now you'll see at the very bottom, she's gonna start to have trouble. So we're gonna really cue some head and heels and up and down how this position. This is just a teaching drill. Surprisingly, you will feel your quads more in this than almost any squat variation you try, but then we're now gonna progress to low. So now we're gonna introduce low to someone that I know is already strong, but we really wanna build a squat and they're missing your external team. So we're gonna use a drill that helps you learn how to shift your body weight back. So Haley's gonna start with soft knees and feet somewhat close on the ramp. As she drops down into her squat, that plate's gonna go out to counterbalance. She can really fight to stay tall. She's gonna stop right there and come back up. She goes a little farther. You'll actually notice as she goes into it that her butt starts to draw back. So let's go a little farther on this one. At the very bottom, her butt will drift back because she can no longer control that rotation at her hip. So she's gonna do one more rep, stop a little bit sooner, straight down the elevator, heavy heels, and pause, straight up. So using this drill to help you feel your weight shift great transition into actually loading your squat. Once we venture into helping someone goblet squat and we know doesn't have hip extra rotation, we're gonna build this squat big time. So here you're gonna see on the ramp, feeling the body weight shift back a little bit and the elbows at that kind of low reach angle. We're still gonna use a cue, drop straight down the elevator, trust those knees forward. Right? And you'll see here the tough part is gonna be learning to control and not wanting to tilt forward. So we have to really, really trust the idea of heavy heels keeping our head over our butt as we go. 
So as we start trying to actually put heavier loads on somebody that doesn't have hip external rotation and wants to learn to squat and feel their quads totally, we're gonna to venture into front loaded positions. Front loaded positions are gonna help somebody with no hip external rotation to feel more quads. Enter the Zercher squat. So with the Zercher squat, we can start loading heavier than the dumbbell, but we're still gonna apply the same lean. We're gonna allow those elbows to get out a little bit, just shift that body weight back on the ramp. And then we're gonna drop straight down the elevator and trusting those knees forward. Heavy heels at the bottom, really feeling yourself pushing the floor away to go back up. The final version we're gonna show and how to build a squat for somebody with no hip external rotation that really wants to feel the quads is the front squat. However, this is going to be your highest skill version of a front loaded position for somebody without those range of motion as Haley gets under the bar. Now we have to battle someone needs shoulder range of motion and wrist range of motion while still working through the hips. So what you'll immediately see is she'll start arching the back already to find the position. So we have to cue extra hard here. Soft knees, find a little tack of your hips and really feel that weight back. And she's battling me hard. And now she tries to drop straight down, but it's gonna be difficult to get money down. You're gonna see that as she gets lower, her only option is to throw the butt further back. And this is where you hear the crowd say she needs more T-spine mobility, when it's really that she needs more hip mobility to make this happen. Now I'm gonna show you what happens when you try and get somebody to front squat that doesn't have external rotation to make a very vertical squat happen. If you front load this person, you're gonna see their butt start to shoot back and arch forward already because they don't have that range of motion in that position. So they're already starting from a difficult spot. Now, they're gonna try and drop straight down and you're gonna see a few things happen. Immediately, their butt goes back, their shoulders hip forward. And what happens in the fitness space is somebody is immediately told they don't have wrist mobility, they don't have upper back mobility, and they don't have ankle mobility. When in reality, it was simply all starting from the rib cage and hips. That's why I put Haley on a ramp with more controlled front loaded positions. She immediately has no limitation in her quads and squat. And it's why the front squat is not going to be the best version for somebody lacking the next elevation issue. Her only way to make this happen is to move the feet a little bit wider, go softer knees, and really drive the elbows in and up and try to drop down from there. And she can get a little more vertical, but it's still going to be a hinging squat. 